Good morning guys. I'm making a batch of cheese and I keep promising you guys I'll show you my process. So I'm making an alpine kind of parmesan tome style cheese which you can make with a partially skimmed milk. So I skimmed a bit of the cream to make butter. That's a separate video. And this four gallons is all going to go into this pot to make cheese. So all we're doing here to start off with is gently warming up this vat of milk. Got it on four, so medium low. Gently warming it up. It's gonna take at least half an hour. These, I let them kind of sit for a bit and then I'll use the spatula to get that last bit out because every bit is gold, people. Don't waste it. So our culture for this cheese is the whey skimmed from yogurt because it's got active bacteria in it and all we're gonna do this milk is now 90 degrees Fahrenheit then so I've turned the heat off stir this in and I'm gonna cover it and take it off the heat and it's gonna sit and incubate for an hour Mac is currently dealing with clean dishes beside me here's a wheel of Asiago which is similar to what we're making from the other day I'm making parmesan I'm making parmesan so it gets flipped, the top is not as pretty. It gets flipped and it's gonna sit out till it's about like a clammy handshake is how you describe it. But there's all sorts of dairy on our fridge. We have buttermilk, cheese, butter, all the things. What do you need? Down here? There you go. One of my tips is guys, just wash your jars right away because if you just wash them right away, it's a really quick wash. If you let them sit, they become crusted and hard to deal with. So, just dealing with other dishes right now. No. Baby is eating something off the floor that she probably shouldn't be. What do you have, baby? Oh, who even knows? Guys, I've been vacuuming my floor so often and yet she still finds things. She found a crayon earlier, as you can tell by her face. For those curious, this is the book I'm using. Okay. And I'm following this alpine cheese part here. And this is just kind of some overall explanations and then the recipe. So this is a five gallon recipe, but I'm actually using a four gallon recipe. But it calls for a double dose of rennet and it's been sitting for an hour now, so rennet is what we're gonna add. So on my rennet, it says the rate in which you use it. So I just do a bit of math and do a double dose on this. I buy it by the liter because I use a lot and I share it as well with my sister and whatever. So I've got my rennet diluted in a cup of water. And gently stir it. So cheese making you do an up and down motion as well as an around to make sure it gets up and down as well. They say don't break the surface, but I feel like it doesn't really matter that much and just gently stir it to make sure it's all combined. And then put the lid back on and set your timer for an hour. So it's been an hour now, and how we test to see if our curds are ready or they need a few more minutes is with your finger, a clean finger. You could use a knife, but finger works better. So you put your finger in at an angle, and then you pull it up, and see how it did that clean break? If the break is a little sloppy, leave it for another 10 or 15 minutes. But this is all good. And the curds on this one is quite simple. You don't have to cut a specific size with a knife. You use a whisk to get small lentil size curds. So a cheese like this, what I like about it versus a Gouda or a cheddar is there's not a bunch of funky weird steps like washing the curds or cheddaring the curds. 
you mix it with a whisk, and you stir it, and then you press it. This is the sort of cheese that is good in my life. So once we're sure they're all done, we're gonna turn on the heat and start it warming up. So at this point, the recipe says after they've been cut, we're going to heat them to 110 Fahrenheit for about 30 to 60 minutes. It says continue stirring non-top, stop, I do not. I'm gonna be in the kitchen, cleaning the kitchen, things like that, and every minute or two, I'm gonna stir it for a minute. But I'm gonna stir, then I'm gonna do something, then I'm gonna stir, then I'm gonna do something. I don't ever stir non-stop, it just doesn't work with my lifestyle. One thing I have learned though, while it says 30 to 60 minutes in 110 Fahrenheit, what you're going to do is you're gonna use that as a guideline, but actually look at this. When pressed between thumb and forefinger, they bounce back to their original shape. They are ready to be put in the form. This is important because every milk acts a little different and I was way overcooking. This milk from this cow acts way different than our last cow and I was unintentionally way overcooking things and making firm cheeses that didn't press well and were really dried out. So now this cow actually, it cooks a lot quicker. I'm gonna be less than 30 minutes to get to the desired firmness. So you can stir with your hand or you can stir it with a wooden spoon. Um, I quite often, if I leave the cheese for more than a minute or two because I've forgotten about it, I stir with my hand because that way I can feel to the bottom and make sure there's nothing clumping together. I can break up the clumps. I can feel that everything's getting heated evenly. Your hand is a great tool for cheese making and some people are weirded out by that, but guys, we use our hands for bread making. It's really not much different, except for that now my hand is dirty and I can't turn my camera off. So I was dealing with kids and I forgot about this for a few minutes, so I have some clumps. So you can see, we're just going to break them apart with our hands and we're good to go. And I can tell that it's getting a little hot at the bottom because I'm using my hand. So making sure I stir it, redistribute that. Maybe I'll turn it down the heat a bit. I'm just breaking up these clumps. It's not as fancy of a process as we make it out to be, guys. I promise you that. So I was stirring it with my hand and it was starting to feel a little hot. So I checked the temperature and we're right on. It's just about 110, which is when it's time to turn off the heat and move it off the heat. And I've been stirring with my hand because it's wanting to clump together. But something that, so it's only been about 20 to 30 minutes and it's supposed to take 30 to 60 minutes. But like I was saying, with this cow's milk, it firms up quicker. And, um, Coming close on me, Mac. So when I squeeze them, they bounce back, which means that it's time to let them sit for a few minutes for them all to sink to the bottom. And then I'm gonna put them in my press. Not right now, Ham. So now that these have sat for five minutes, actually it was closer to 10 minutes, um, I have, Ham, could you help? Help along, please. I have a strainer over top of a top to catch the whey. And I'm straining the whey out. Henry, could I have a bit of space, please? Henry, a bit of space, please. And then I'm actually going to put, this is pushing the limits of this pot, <laughs> but I'm gonna put all the curds in here. Okay, I would like a bit of space, Henry. And okay, so I've got those in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my cheese press and put it in this pot because then I have a place to catch the whey. And where's my cheesecloth? So actual cheesecloth doesn't work very well. This is just really thin organic muslin. So I'm gonna line this with it. This cheesecloth is a little on the small side, but we make do. And then 
we're going to put this in and we're going to break it up a bit when we put it in so it can press better. And I pretty much always end up with whey on the floor when I do this. Henry, please don't splash in the way. So this press is for about a five gallon batch and that's kind of pushing it. Um, this cow, her milk produces or yields more cheese per gallon than average. So I can only kind of do about a four gallon batch in this press. Can you guys help Rowan please? Can you please help the baby? No, Hamish, help the baby. I'm obviously busy making cheese and I need you to pick up the baby and help her. Hey mama. Yes, Mike. How about one of these days you go to Mrs. Taberton and teach her how to make cheese? Yes, we buy one of these days. Okay, so. I got all the curds out, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make I'm gonna pull up the sides to make it all tight. And then I fold over one side to protect the top. And then I'm gonna put in this top. Give it a good press down. Okay. Mac, are you doing it properly? Yeah, it's looking at you, it's looking at him, it's looking at Fred. Okay, everybody back away a bit. Okay, come a bit closer for him, Mac. Okay, so now these are like over top. Look over top. So now I'm gonna put my spring in. I gotta get this down lower. Okay. Pam, help the baby. Hamish? How long have you had the cheese press? I have had this, I, I know Freya tipped over. I've had this cheese press since Hamish was a baby. It's not the best cheese press, but it does the job good enough. And you've made quite a lot of cheese, mostly since we moved here. Oh, I made a lot of cheese when you guys were little, you just don't remember. Okay, so, you made because cheese. it's so full in here, I can't even get this down all the way easily. I have to like push this down because it's so full of cheese and the spring is a little on the big side. So you do cheese at least. Okay, three. so Mac, just let me explain right now. Okay, so I'm making sure that my, can you come over top please so they can see? So I'm making sure that my spring is straight down because it likes to kind of go sideways and then I tighten this down the rest of the way so that now this part is solid in place. Now, because I want firm pressure on this, I'm gonna press this down, I'm gonna twist this, until I meet too much resistance and I can't twist it anymore. I'm actually getting more than I thought I would. So then this part here, this thing in here likes to go sideways and I can tell it's uneven because the way is pooling on one side. So what I do is I just kind of press it to make it so the way is even on the whole thing. You can also test with like a marble or something to see that it's level. So it's just gonna be in here like this for an hour and then I'm gonna flip it around. Okay, so it's been half an hour now and after about half an hour to an hour is when I flip it. So why this press is tedious, oh this isn't gonna work, is because now I have to undo all this in order to flip it. Is what it is, but um, one day I would like one that's a little simpler. Also, it would be nice to have a press that does continuous pressures because as the pressure goes and the way comes out, um, it loosens the pressure on it. Take all the parts out and then I pull it up 
baby is fussy because her siblings were very loud and woke her up from a nap. So I take out this part first and then I pull by the cheesecloth to get the other parts out. And already it's looking like a wheel of cheese. How about that? This side looks really great already. So now I flip it so that the ugly side is down. It's not ugly, it's filthy. And I put it back in the press. And then I pull up on all the sides of the cheesecloth to make sure there's minimal wrinkles. There's still going to be some, but it just means the cheese will look a little smoother. And then I do it again where I fold one side over. No, the side's not long enough. Fold over, cover the top, and put this back in again. This top part is starting to be not so happy anymore. It's made a lot of cheese over the years. Maybe it'll break and I'll have to buy a new cheese press. Don't hope for that. Okay, I know that's not a good thing to hope for. Maybe. And the same process again. Although this time because it the cheese is smaller now. I don't have to press down on this thing. You only want like a medium hard pressure. This cheese you want hard because you're going for a firm cheese. So I crank it down as tight as I can. Now I just tuck it inside my kitchen and it's gonna wait there until tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning I'm gonna take it out of the press and then it's gonna get brined. You can do a surface salting or a brining. I find brining kind of less messy and you can use the brine a few times. So that is the process that I use and I'll show you that in the morning. So it's time to brine the cheese now. I've got, it's made with Himalayan pink salt which is why it's this color. But you can use it a few times. You're just doing salt and water, warming it together so that it's all dissolved. I can store it in this bucket because I can brine this cheese in this bucket. It's about 9.30 right now so I'm gonna throw the cheese in here before I go to bed. I will flip it and in the morning I'll take it out. And I've also got dinner stuff going on here and kids are doing school and dishes and general chaos and craziness. But now it's time to take this out. So I've got the cheese out. Um, you can see one side always looks a little uglier, but that's okay. Just how my press is. This side looks nice. Hold your horses Freya. And then all we're gonna do is put it in this brine and it's just gonna wait there until tonight when I flip. This is a similar style cheese that I made a few days ago. Um, and it's still just sitting on the counter, although probably today it could go to my cool room. And I'll be washing the rind of it to inhibit mold. I do salt mixed in vinegar and I just wipe it on with a cloth. There will be little bits of mold that start and you just wipe them good with the cloth. But um, this is what it will look like when it's out of the brine and ready to go be aged. So I took the cheese out of the brine. It doesn't look much different, although it is paler, but as it sits and air dries, it will get darker like this one. This one needs to sit on the counter for a few days. It's gonna sit till it feels like a clammy handshake. So it just sits there and I flip it once or twice a day. And I'm gonna put this one in the cool room, so I thought I would show you what I do for that. 
bad lighting in here, but this is my root cellar. And this is my cheese cave. Before I had a cheese cave, I just stored cheese in the back of my fridge. So, currently this is Celsius, so it's probably like 45 Fahrenheit-ish type in here. Right now it'll get colder, it'll get down to a couple degrees Celsius, 35-ish Fahrenheit. So, I vacuum seal a lot of cheeses because it's really moist in here. I mean, sorry, it's really dry in here and cheeses I found were drying out too much. Like this is one that I had air dried in here. It's a Parmesan, um, but I ended up vacuum sealing it because it was getting too hard. So I have lots of various vacuum sealed cheeses. Some are better than others. Like a couple of them, I'm not quite sure how they're gonna turn out because they're kind of meh, but some of them look really good. Um, and then over here, I've been experimenting with waxing them. It's not, the waxing is not going super great. Like this wax here cracked. You see how it's getting moldy? It's not really an issue. I'll just wipe it down with vinegar and it'll be fine. So this is the one I just put in here. I need to put a label on it. This is a cheddar that is wrapped in um, lard and cloth. And it will get like gnarly on the outside, but it'll be protected on the inside. And right here is a spiced Gouda that I just vacuum sealed right away after it had done its air drying thing. So there's all sorts of different ways to do it, but for a long time, all I did was wax them and put them in the back of my fridge. I could buy cheese wax and I maybe need to buy cheese wax, but I don't really like the ingredients in cheese wax, which is why I've been trying to get it right. Like this one worked out well and it didn't bust open like that one did, but that one kind of just cracked and busted open as the cheese kind of moved and breathed. But this one is actually a Gouda that's from early September. So it's gonna be delicious, I can't wait. If you don't have a cheese cave, don't let that discourage you, okay guys? Um, it's. Like you can just use your fridge to age cheeses. That's cool. I used to just have cheeses stacked up in the back of my fridge. This is pretty cool that I have this room to do it in. But if you don't, don't let it discourage you. So how I will care for that cheese is every couple days when I'm just in the cool room anyways, I'll flip it and when it starts to get bits of mold on it, I will rub it down with um, I dissolve salt and vinegar and I just use a cloth and wipe it down. Kills the mold, all that jazz, and it continues aging. Mold is not bad in cheese. Mold gives flavor, so it's just more keeping it in check. I hope you enjoyed my little cheese making video. Uh, it's by no means a tutorial or a how-to, it's just a how I make a wheel of cheese. So I hope that was some encouragement to you and that if you've been on the fence about making cheese, it might help you jump over the fence. Sometimes you're gonna mess up, but that's okay. Rarely will the cheese be unsalvageable. It'll just be different.